is not an exercise. We genuinely think there is a possibility that a man may actually be floating in the water somewhere. Two ratings who were passing off down the port side of the upper deck saw someone coming towards them. They also saw a big wave coming and so ducked back for cover. When they looked again, the space was empty. was carrying a torch and he had a white top on. They don't know about his trousers, they just saw the white top, the reflection of his torch. So he could have been in either night clothing, clothing. half blow, half blow, oh, sorry, could conceivably have been in been cook's wife. Okay, please. We have a marker in the water which was put there within a few minutes of uh, the chap disappearing over the side. There was obviously a time delay between the chaps reporting to the bridge. We also have a plot running in the operations room with the position marked. So we can get back uh, to about the same position. We can send the helicopter there very quickly uh, to search that particular area. And this, we also have our destroyers in company who will search that area. Would you excuse me? The senior engineer, sir, for you. Right, thank you. I must get to you. Fortunately, it proved to be a false alarm, but it was a it was a very genuine false alarm, i.e. the ratings who made the report did so in good faith, and I might say with a certain amount of moral courage, I mean, they were in doubt. Um, they knew the sort of furore that would follow that sort of report, um, but they still reckoned that there was a possibility and they should report it, and they did. The main problem is that on this ship is that most of us are graduates. I still get the impression that I'm still at college, still at school yeah. while I'm under training and that I'm not doing a full day's work. That's especially true of graduates there because it seems to us that we've been uh, under training for so long. I expect to come out of the big wide world, get a fairly responsible job and yeah. yet my, I'm standing time at the moment. And there's no responsibility uh, as an officer under training, is there? That's right. You come to a ship and you start to talk to people and they say, oh, what department do you belong to? And you say, I'm an officer under training. And they seem to sort of shy back, being on such a large ship as this. They tend to sort of shy, shy back, and they don't really want to mix with you as often, you know, as much, say, if you were to say, well, I'm a pilot on 824. What I think I possibly find uh, annoying is having to uh, keep silence when perhaps you, uh, you're a guy's unjustified in making a criticism mm. um, and you're not allowed to answer back um, although well uh, for, for everyone but especially for graduates your instinct is to say well that's not right you don't know all the circumstances no young officer who's any good at all ever feels he's got enough responsibility and of course I mean he reckons that he could easily be captain of the ship tomorrow if uh, given half a chance, and uh, the silly old buggers who uh, are running the ship at the moment aren't half as good as he would be if he were the boss. And I mean, I certainly remember thinking that, that uh, I, I could have uh, done with far more responsibility. And I, I really think that's quite a healthy sign. It becomes unhealthy if they sort of become arrogant and think that there's nothing that they can learn. But if it's just sort of eagerness, to, to assume responsibility, that's fine. Morning, hello. Yeah, hello, Chris. Take a, take a few. Thanks. Um, some journals for the captain from Lieutenant Divine. Right, lovely. Thanks so much. 
OK, well, what I do with these, I, in fact, read them through fairly carefully. I find out when the captain last saw it, okay. and um, I'll take it up to him. When we're at sea, I may or may not have a chance to talk to him about it, but I just stick a, a tab in saying, Captain for Signature, last seen on a certain day. The journals are a number of essays on various subjects. Starting this year, I did essays on Ulster, the Dutch wars in the 17th century, because we were operating with Dutch warships at the time. I sometimes think that it's somewhat superfluous for graduates, especially in art subjects, to do these essays, since they've had experience at university. I, I myself did about 200 essays when I was at Oxford. Good. Thanks, Thanks very Good much. Good morning. Bye. What was 3-2's problem? Low thrust again. Low thrust. Low thrust. Permanent, sir. Roger, they'll have to do better before we get to Mayport. <laughs> David Morgan's just been saying the sea temperature's dropped. Did you yes. 10 degrees? Yes, they think the, the Labrador, Labrador current has come down. Yeah, yeah, we've sort of got into the shore, so the shore right. of the uh, Gulf Stream. We have blown the temperature. This. That's right. Yes. Because the air temperature's now up a bit. And the last thing we want to do is to find ourselves running into fog. Well, this morning we're going to have a quick look at our electrical power and distribution system. Call this compartment the main switchboard. And from here we can control our DC system. This display here and this particular part represents our ring main power cable. Going around the other departments in, in training, uh, one has to bear in mind that a lot of things on this ship are sensational by everyday standards because of the flying. Um, on the other hand, a lot of things are boring. I had a lecture on the, on the main switchboard, which quite frankly nearly sent me to sleep. Here you see we've got a steam turbine, 1,250 kilowatts, and here's a uh, supply from a diesel generator, 750 kilowatts. A switchboard, I mean, there might be somebody's cup of tea, but not mine, unfortunately. And the fourth, another steam turbine, 1,250 kilowatts. This is one of our steam turbine generator compartments. This is a, an AC generator, 440 volts, uh, one and a quarter megawatt. You can see. Approximately half a tonne weight, most of which is high explosive and rocket motor. Um, the rocket motor and the warhead are both electrically initiated, so we have to take the appropriate electrical precautions. And the missile section is a section of part, really. For me, it's the high point of the ship, because the, the officers and ratings down there are so professional, and they play a vital role in the carrier's role as a strike ship. Um, the missile which we saw, the Martel, I've got a lot of admiration for technical achievement and its use as a, as a weapon. They also found that the warhead tends to leak a mixture of explosive and filling. Oh, it's all happening now. Yeah. Are going for watch? I'm uh, very largely protected from all the boring paperwork and most of the paperwork that actually reaches me is, is quite interesting. I think a lot of it's to do with people, and that people are interesting. I mean, a lot of the confidential reports on officers and confidential reports on ratings. Yes, yes. that's, that's jolly good. good, and I think if you make it, that is just over-egging the pudding. Today, there, were, there are four of our ratings who are going to go to the Admiralty Interview Board to try and become officers, and uh, this is something which is, is interesting, and it, it's worth taking trouble about it. Yeah, okay, thanks so much. Thanks, sir. Coulton, CW Canvet. Oh, yeah, is he uh, yours? Turner's mine, yes. Here! I'll see Dermot, the bloody bum. I've got to see if he's around the back, sir. Yeah, I don't know where he was. The secretary, I... Yeah, because I have the papers here, and now he's gone off. Well, I'll see if I can get the papers for Rich? 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 Rich?
Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, no, let's uh, start again. When you want to say something, say it. Don't beat around the bush trying to make it all airy fairy. Advising people on English, oh look, that's the nearest I've come to actually fulfilling my role as an officer, I felt. And descriptions, again, vitally important. If you want to look at some really good descriptive material, go to the letters section of Mayfair. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding you, because uh, in there, you'll find the best descriptive prose, uh, I should think, in, in English literature today. Because you'll notice how it gets you all worked up, you know, that's that and the other. And you can just imagine what it's like there. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll give him the dummy board here in the ship before he goes and give him sort of encouragement and help and, uh, and hope that he... Uh, Hope that he comes good when he gets there. All right, sir. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Thanks, sir. Captain's close to us. Yeah. Reducing the slur here, sir, for five minutes while they spread the blade to the sea king. Roger. It sounds a bit corny, but getting things like human relations right is really the most important part of the job because if the guys on board are happy, the chances are they'll be reasonably efficient and work hard as well. I mean, obviously my aim is to have uh, an efficient fighting ship, but uh, I believe that I'm unlikely to achieve that if I, unless I have a happy ship's company. So I do think that the sort of, if you like, the, the happiness and well-being of the ship's company, and of course, all, I mean, all the officers, all the people on board, is, is really my... Um, major, major sort of requirement. one or two people who didn't recognize me at all and didn't know who I was and, and uh, not so long ago down one of the boiler rooms I was talking to uh, one of the chaps down there and I said something about having been uh, I was a gunnery officer and therefore I was half deaf anyhow and he said well if you're a gunnery officer what on earth are you doing on board this ship and then I said well I was the captain now and he 